Hello, all my friends in TV land. This is Senior Issues, etc., and I'm your host, Vita Verdon, and I have a very interesting follow up show for you today. So hurry up, come, relax, sit down, get your coffee, whatever, and I want to thank you for watching the show. And the show I have for you today is you know, about a year ago, I had, uh, it was detected I had cancer in my left eye and uh, my eyelid was uh, removed during the procedure of removing the cancer. And so I had facial reconstruction. And in the facial reconstruction, I had a plastic surgeon and he's been on the show already once. It's a, he's a surgeon extraordinaire. Uh, and he rebuilt uh, an eyelid, which I find the procedure was so remarkable. Well, anyway, going back to the first show that he did here, the last show that he did, well, that was the only show that he did here, this is his second show, is we couldn't go into depth of about what it covers and what face fractures and I know he's a consultant to a lot of athletes because they're getting all kinds of face fractures. So today we're going to go a little deeper into it. And for those new affiliates that haven't seen the first show, I'm going to have them give a little background. So I want you to sit back, relax. This one's for you. And give a warm wel welcome to a Dr. Milaf Meta extraordinaire plastic surgeon, plus he's an ophthalmologist also. So the first thing we'd like to know, welcome you to the show today. It's so good to have you here, uh, Dr. Mehta. And, and for those uh, uh, audience, our guests, our friends out there in TV land, if you just look right in that camera and tell them a little about yourself and about your kids and your wife and give them that heart hug and say what it is. Well, thank you so much for having me back. Uh, I must have done an okay job, at least if you invited me back. Uh, special thanks to my wonderful uh, twin daughters. They're three. Uh, you know, Daddy's thinking about you, and to my amazing wife, um, who without her, we couldn't make any of this stuff work and couldn't make life work. So I'm a, an ophthalmologist or an eye surgeon. I'm also a facial plastic surgeon. Uh, I'm dual trained and uh, my specialty is dealing with uh, different structures um, in the eyes, around the eyes, and on the face. One of the things that I do work with is a, a lot of trauma patients uh, involving fractures of some of the facial bones, often uh, you know, related to um, trauma, falls, um, car accidents, things like that. But we also deal with patients who have uh, suffered injuries during uh, athletic uh, events and such, and so we will see those patients. Uh, I take care of a lot of patients with skin cancers, specifically of eyelids, eyebrows, nose, face, and cheeks. Uh, and so that's kind of a unique thing that will help find these cancers by doing biopsies, removing them so that they don't grow back, and then reconstructing uh, the you know, defect or the wound or the hole that we make by removing it. So you have to find it, remove it, and then put everything back together so it looks normal and functions normally. Because this is something that you know has to be done well and, and appropriately because you know that's your that's your ability to uh, engage others using your face and uh, the way you look. Well, uh, getting back to my procedure, we're starting out. We're not going to focus it completely on that. Is uh, the procedure that was used on me is first of all I had the cancer removed, and then you went in and used the procedure to rebuild an eyelid. I'd like you to explain to our uh, audience uh, of what the old procedure was and that this new procedure who you said was developed by your mentor, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, what, and the new procedure. So the old way of building uh, an eyelid, if uh, you know, there's a, a, an area where part of the eyelid is missing or even right. part of the tissues are missing, is to you know, use what's called a shared graft, where you would stitch the upper and lower eyelids together temporarily, 
and then you know kind of split it and divide it so that the eyelids open back up again. Well now how long would that have to be closed? So usually it's between three and five weeks so if you can imagine for three to five weeks essentially this eye is not seeing because it's it's you know st it's stitched well, shut. Well then when it's opened is, isn't it kind of stiff or something? So it is sometimes a little Swollen stiff and it can be smaller than the uh, the original or other side uh -huh. but it, it never really functions uh, exactly the same way. And oh. so the newer way is to use tissues from around the eyelid rather than upper or lower. Some of the tissues on the outsides here. What do you mean on the side? Correct. And so what we did, uh, you know, specifically is we can take tissues from, from over here, from here and rotate it into place or kind of push it into place and use that as our new scaffolding. And then you like stitch it together? So we stitch everything back together to give it some integrity and bring uh -huh. the edges together so it looks nice. But we also have to fix the underlying tissues. So Would that be the muscle? The muscles. And so you want them to open and close a Appropriately, you want to be able to look left and right, up and down, and have all that movement back as well. So we fix everything in different layers. Well, the thing that I found so remarkable is, uh, uh, one day I had the cancer removed, and I just had a bandage on for that night. And then the next day I had plastic surgery with you, and that when you came in to see me the following day, you took the bandage off. And that's that's usually the best way to do it. We keep things that's remarkable. covered. That's remarkable, and the lid went up and down. Yeah. How does it function like that so fast? So if if, uh, if the original uh, injury or the original surgery, uh, once they remove part of the eyelid skin and the muscles, we're just putting it back together almost immediately. And so that's one of the really neat and unique things about surgery is when you're fixing structures, you can often see the results right then and there. Huh. Now, uh, I know that you got into plastic surgery because you were always interested in surgery, right? Yeah. So I, I, th I always thought when we first started medical school and I started school, I thought it was something so wonderful about uh, being able to use your hands to fix somebody else's problems. And it's the immediacy of what I get to do. I see my results often right, right there. And so you can say to a patient, and a patient can tell you, hey, Doc, I feel better. I, uh -huh. I look better. I'm working better. And that immediate gratification is really wonderful. It's very unique. Uh, you know, you don't always get to say, hey, I made someone better and get to see the results right away. Well, I know that there's a lot going on in the face, isn't there? Correct. There's a lot of important stuff and, a, and very little real estate. And so... What you, do you mean by real estate? So, you know, even within the eye socket themselves, you know, the eye socket is sort of shaped like an ice cream cone. Okay. And the eye sits in there like ice cream in an ice cream cone. Is there the thing in the back then like the So cone? there is, an, uh, just like in the back of an ice cream cone, you have that kind of, you know, arrow where it kind right. of narrows down. Uh -huh. And in the center, in the back of the ice cream cone uh -huh. itself, or the eye socket, is, uh, a, you know, a wonderful nerve that transmits all all the information that we see, very similar to film in a camera, your optic nerve. So that's uh -huh. what interprets everything we see and it goes back in there and back towards the brain and helps you have your vision. So you can imagine in such a small enclosed area, eye socket, the bones around there, and eyeball and the optic nerve, there's not a lot of wiggle room for uh -huh. things to either swell or get an injury or a fracture or any damage like that. There's a lot of important things there that you have to make sure stay where they're supposed to stay uh -huh. and you know don't get overlap. You want to make sure things are where they're supposed to be. Uh -huh. Well, now the majority of people don't come directly to you. They go to their ophthalmologist first, Correct. right? Correct. Yeah. And then so then the uh, ophthalmologist recommends if, if they're suspicious of something like what happened to me is my ophthalmologist Dr. Hertz noticed that I had something growing here on my eye and he was suspicious of it so he brought me directly to you and you're the one who did the biopsy on me and found out that it was cancerous. Is that generally how the procedure goes? Yeah and since I'm, I'm a specialist within a specialty most of the patients who come see me have already seen someone else first and then they kind of get funneled in or directed to come see me. Uh, but, you know, that being said, sometimes patients will reach out and say, hey, you know what, 
I have something on my eyelids or I have something on my face. I don't like the way it looks. Uh -huh. And they'll actually, you know, uh, find... They'll seek you out? Yeah, they'll seek now me. Now, you are a part of the North Shore system, right? Correct. And so... I, so I, that I, involves like four different hospitals, Yeah, right? so our, our main hospitals are Highland Park, Evanston, right. Skokie, and Glenview. Skokie and, Blen and Glenview. Yeah. And so you work out, you have an office in each one of these hospitals? So my offices are primarily Skokie and Glenview, um, uh -huh. but I do do surgery at all four hospitals. Uh, I know that um, recently you were on, uh, on the Fox Channel and WGN, I think that's Channel 9, because uh, there, I think that the discussion is about fractures. We're going to go into that in the next section on, on fractures and so many of our athletes are getting so many fr so many fractures and so you're the one that is acts as a consultant and advises people the direction that they should go. But now what we've come to, we're going to come back to it, but I, I just have to interject. I feed uh, his pearls of wisdom and there's a couple things that I want to talk to you about today. Well, the first thing I want to say is I want to uh, welcome our new affiliate, uh, Channel 16, out of City Hall in Evanston, Illinois. Welcome. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people who have requested, and we're so happy, and we have such gratitude that we are requested, because if I didn't have an audience, I wouldn't have a show. We are a community service show, and so you know, we want to serve the community in the widest, most possible way. And our, our growth seems to be coming and seems to be overtaking us at this time, which we welcome in any way that we can outreach and serve you. Please feel free to contact us. You can go to our website, and in our website it will show you all the different affiliates that we have, all the places that we're servicing, and it will give all the information, of, and it will show there's about 40 shows online, and it will show every community and the time that it's seen. And that would be senioriswetc.org. Or if you want to personally contact me, contact me, small casing, Vita Verden, at netzero.net. .net. So feel free to contact me. Okay, the next thing I'd like to talk to you about, we're right in the primary season. Now, as a voting block of seniors, the thing that I am so very proud of is that we, senior lives matter. It matters because we're the first group of seniors that have lived as long as we're living, and we welcome and cherish that the baby boomers have joined us, so that has gathered together and that we're the first generation that has lived this long. So we don't have a blueprint, and they have not printed a book to tell us this is how you're supposed to be. And so what we need to do is we need to network together, and we need to share our information together, because what we need to find out from each other and for all the services that are around us, how to live this long in a very healthy fashion. And in the very healthy fashion, what we have to keep these little gray cells going, and we keep them going by using them and taking responsibility to our life, be a community-minded person, give back and to the community, and as we give back to the community, and get out and vote. Get out and vote. That vote is important. Now, since we are the first generation, we have an extra responsibility. And the extra responsibility that we have is that we have been destined to be role models. So the next generation that's following us, they're going to follow our lead. So as what we're projecting and how we're hanging how we're handling this elongated life is what they're going to determine and build upon that and develop upon that. So what we have to do is pay attention to all the information that we're giving and be grateful, have a gratitude for it, and know how to handle it. And the next thing is that, you know, I had a mishap re recently with my leg, 
And so I had recently gone to one of the medical supply houses and I found out, I had tell, told you that if you need a cane, use it, that the place I found, they, they have cheap folding claims as Walgreens, but now they have a new cane that's out and I bought one for myself and it actually has four prongs on it and then it acts, it stands on its own and it acts like a crutch that is so much more sturdy. And so the, in every community, I know we're in a lot of different communities, but every community has a medical supply house. I'm not uh, giving a commercial for any one particular one, but go out and look at them and they're gonna help you because as we go back with Dr. Mehta, he's gonna tell us one of the worst things and I think he's gonna say, I'm taking a guess at it, falls because falls are a, a thing that happens. So we're gonna talk about how to prevent them and we're gonna go into fractures. With all that, you know, keep yourself together. You know that we've been friends now for a long time, 16 years, and you know that I love you and I'm thinking about you. And I'm try, I, I get up here and pour my heart out and bring you the best information that there is. Now let's get back to the subject matter of fractures and falls. I know that we were talking about that earlier and that you had discussed with me in one of the, my visits to your office that uh, you had been on WGN Channel 9 and on uh, Fox News, right? So yeah, you know, we had a, a, a very famous Chicagoan um, suffer an injury where he broke one of the bones. An athlete? Are you yeah, an athlete, about? Derek Rose, everyone knows, uh, you know, he plays for the Chicago Bulls, uh -huh. uh, had suffered an injury where he broke uh, one of the bones of the eye socket. Uh -huh. And you know, when something like that happens, they, uh, they want to know who in town uh, knows about it. And, and uh, you know, I never saw uh, Mr. Rose as a patient, but I do take care of a lot of patients um, with fractures in that in that location, uh -huh. so it was mostly an educational thing. What what you know? What is the eye socket? What's involved with the surgery? Um, teach us a little bit about the anatomy. Teach us how people heal after such a fracture. And so, uh, did you want the graphic up on yeah, that? Yeah, we could put the graphic up. Um, okay. And so, you know, it's it's kind of neat to be able to demonstrate how beautiful the design is of the face, especially around the eyes. And there's seven bones, seven individual bones that kind of encase the opt, you know, the eye and the optic nerve. Like I said, just like an ice cream cone uh, and uh, the ice cream sitting in there. Okay. And uh, usually it's the, you know, the floor of the eye socket, which okay. acts like a hammock to kind of keep the eye up and keeps it from falling down. Uh, that's usually the floor that breaks. It's one of the thinner bones, and I think it's by design. If an injury occurs where something hits the uh, face or hits the eye, you don't want the eye itself to take all that damage. You know, it's very right. soft. You instead want the bones around there to transmit the force and break out. And so the force, you know, comes and attacks here, but you want the, you know, the force to be transmitted somewhere. So the bones actually break away um, to protect the eye because if oh. the eye takes all that force so it's all protected for the eye correct and so it's beautifully designed okay. and you know those those bones that are found around there are very fragile I mean they're they're there to design to you know keep you safe and help your eyes you know work and, and function properly but they're fragile they can break and so one of the things I always say is you want to try to avoid and minimize risk so make sure that you see your eye doctor every year to maximize your vision because often we'll hear, hey, I didn't see that rug or hey, I didn't see that door or I didn't see that toy that was sitting there and you fall over it. So your vision is first. Vision's very important. So okay. every year try to go in and see your ophthalmologist. Make sure that uh, you know they get an update on your eyeglasses. Make sure if the, there's macular degeneration or glaucoma that is treated and minimized and, and uh, maximize your vision. And important, especially if you have cataracts, that they're taking care of those cataracts as well because you want to see everything that's going on, especially your footwork. Uh -huh. But one thing you mentioned was stability when walking. So often a, a, a cane or a walker is a very important thing. Very important. Yeah, to kind of help you, you know, keep your balance because 
it, you know, if you break a bone, it doesn't matter if it's in the eyes, face, uh -huh. or if it's, uh, you know, your, your hip or anything like that. A fracture is a fracture, and it's quite painful and often requires surgery to repair and stabilize the bone using either metal plates and screws or sometimes even implants. So it's one of those things, if you can avoid it, the best medicine here is avoiding uh -huh. an injury or avoiding... Uh, so you know, the facial air area, the whole, whole skull area is very fragile. Is fragile. That, is that what you're saying? You know, the bones themselves are strong, but uh -huh. it's the things that they're protecting that are fragile. So the eye itself is, is very soft and, and fragile. Uh -huh. And so you want to make sure you keep all these sensory organs working as well as they can. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, now you you work on the whole facial reconstruction. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Primarily uh, in and around the eyes, but the whole face. Uh, so, I mean, this is done just through accidents, or do you do cos cosmetic? So we, so I, I do you know, a little bit of cosmetic surgery. I think uh, those are, are a different group of patients, different uh, expectations. I think they're coming in. They're often uh, younger, very healthy, uh -huh. that want to, you know, re rejuvenate their face and look more similar to when they were, uh, you know, youthful and and things. So we do a, a little you bit mean of mean like eyes. Yeah, we do eyelid surgery, eyelid lifts, forehead uh -huh. lifts, um, cheek implants. Um, sometimes we'll use Botox, as you guys know. That's a neurotoxin. What is that, Botox? I don't know. So what Botox that is. is a medication. It's a, an injectable medicine that we give primarily to uh, quiet down wrinkles by, you know, weakening muscles. So, so what, does it act as a filler? So it does not fill what it does, for example, in the forehead. If right. I lift my forehead up, you can see I can form those creases uh -huh. right there. And the Botox would be given right into those muscles there to soften it up and, and so smooth it that out. It, it, it relaxes them. Exactly. So it relaxes uh -huh. muscles, and by relaxing muscles, it decreases wrinkles. Uh -huh. But we also use Botox for medical purposes. Like what? Uh, sometimes people have overacting muscles, like spasms, where the eyes will constantly be closing and they have a hard time opening their eyes, uh -huh. in which case we'll give Botox to help quiet those spasms uh -huh. um, around the eyes. Uh, sometimes we'll use it uh, in children who are, sometimes if they're born cross-eyed and we can give uh, Botox to help straighten out the muscle and straighten out the eyes. That's a temporary fix until they have the more definitive uh, eye muscle surgery to straighten out their eyes, but it is used in that regard. Uh, we have used them for headache treatments as well. By uh, weakening some of the muscles selectively around the head and neck, you can reduce tension. Often we hold a lot of tension in the neck and in the shoulders, huh. and that's some of the locations we give Botox. So it's not just for beauty, it's also to help things. Huh. That is so interesting. Now, um, th with the athletes, with the athletes, uh, it, it's, it's the game that is played that is so rough that the athletes end up with so much, so many more injuries. That, but, but with seniors, the biggest thing is falls. Falls, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, as you correctly said, the falls are really important, uh -huh. but when athletes get injured, you know, they still have to go through the same regimen that everyone else does. Uh -huh. We still have to go through surgery often. Once we repair them, they don't bounce back uh, the next day. They uh -huh. still have a recovery period. And so uh, with that recovery period, it's similar r regardless of how the injury occurred. You want to make sure that you can make yourself safe and comfortable. Uh -huh. uh, when it's around the eye or eye socket, you want to make sure you're seeing well and, uh, you know, and able to get around. Uh, well, I'd like to go through a few preventative measures. Uh, number one, for seniors, uh, one thing I would recommend is that they check uh, where they live in their apartment or their house rugs yeah. because that's a big cause for falls. That they check that they don't have uh, uh, any little rug that doesn't have the non-slip on the back that their foot will go under. Now, how I had this last fall is uh, there was a runner in the front of the the door that I was walking through, and it had oh. a hole in it, and my foot got caught in that. So we have to be, our vision has to be good to, number one, see yeah. where we're walking, and we can't always be walking, you know, with, your head with down, our head yeah. down, you know, <laughs> and that we have to learn, like, how to prevent, prevent ourselves and take it easy. And another thing is lighting. Lighting is important. Lighting is yeah. important. Now, what I recommend to people is, like, if they have to get up during the night to go to the washroom, that they sit on the edge of the bed 
to get their continuity before they would just get up and like walk to the bathroom and that there would be some sort of a night light that they're not walking in in the dark and taking any kind of a fall. There's also a couple of night lights that have motion detectors on them that can actually activate. We, we usually keep one uh, that's on constantly at night, but there's a few others that actually have a uh, you know a detection system. When they notice movements, they'll they'll, they'll light turn up. On. Yeah, and that's kind of so nice, especially if you're if you're standing up and getting up to walk. It, it detects that movement and the light that? comes on. There's a yeah. night light. Now I didn't know of that. That um, it's it's not on. Is that correct? Correct. And it's so it'll actually no it'll notice movement and then turn itself on. Uh, that that it will turn itself on. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I know you get uh, a great deal of gratification from uh, uh, seeing the immediate results, like with surgery. You, you see immediate. It's, it's wonderful. When you put something back together, just like a puzzle, uh, you can see the structures coming back together. You can see the tissues coming back together. And often, uh, that's one of the wonderful things about uh, what I get to do. People will tell me right away, they'll say, hey, I feel better, I work better, I see better, I'm not having pain, and it's an almost immediate effect, which is wonderful. Obviously, it still takes some time to heal, but knowing that you're on the road to improvement, the road to recovery, uh -huh. that's wonderful. It gives you a lot of joy, uh, a, a lot of happiness. Now, if anybody wants to call the North Shore system, would you happen to have a telephone number? Yeah, so the phone number is area code 224-251-2020, and that's for uh, the Eye and Vision Center at North Shore. Um, we are a wonderful group, a fully comprehensive 17 doctor group, and uh, I think uh, you know we'd love to see you, love to help you. Uh, all my partners are fantastic. And so, and your vision, the vision and, and keeping up with it, this is a very important thing in order to have the longevity that we're experiencing. Wouldn't you say so? Well, I 100% agree with you. Uh, well, let's go into preventative. Uh, you were talking about a type of a glass. So there's a type of glass lens called polycarbonate or shatterproof glasses w that you Would you, you can say wear. the name again so, so people could get it? Of course, it's called a polycarbonate lens. And this is a really unique uh, product in the sense that it, you know, you wear them like normal glasses. We can grind your normal um, prescription right into them. So uh -huh. they look like normal glasses. However, they're shatterproof. So if something gets you know, thrown your way and it hits the glass, it's not going to damage. It, well, it, it, will it scratch it? Um, potentially can scratch it, but they can put a scratch guard on it. Uh, oh, but well, but it, the fact that it's, it's more robust and a lot more uh, safe than a regular pair of glasses, it's important. So uh, this, it's, it, you say this is a plastic. It's a hardened plastic called it's a hardened polycarb. Plastic. Yeah. So say the person would drop it or something would happen, it, it wouldn't affect the glasses in any way? It, it might affect the, the rim or the plastic around the glasses, but the lenses themselves are actually very strong. And so, okay, so what are we recommending to people? That that is available for them. Correct. And that they yeah. should go uh, to their, uh, they should go to their ophthalmologist at yeah. least once a year, right? Cer for, certainly for once case. a year and, and sooner if, if you have uh, anything developing, glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, go see them more often. And if you see a lump anywhere in, in your facial area, yeah. to have that checked out immediately, right? Of course, because anything that's growing, uh, you know, you can have benign tumors, you can uh -huh. have malignant tumors. Anything that's an overgrowth or uh -huh. something that has changed rapidly yes. or unusually or well, is uncomfortable, have you it checked. You know what? We just could go on and on, but right. you know what it is? We've come to the, when you come to the end of your rope, you tie a knot and hang on. You tie a knot and hang on because you know what we want you to do this week? We want you to catch the spirit because the best is yet to come.